Because I feel so welcomed. <sighs> so welcomed by you and your yeah. brotherhood. I was mm. saying to Kunal on the way here, like the feeling of coming here and just you know, almost instantly being welcomed by such a strong pack of brothers is yeah. supportive beyond belief. Like it really, I'm, I'm so grateful. I can't tell you, just that alone has lifted me and will lift my purpose and my work so much. So thank you so much. <laughs> yeah, you're welcome. And don't you feel like uh, on the planet, just as an energy, the power of brotherhood, how, how inviting it really can be. Mm. Like men united together from a heart-led space. It is a powerful medicine that this planet desperately needs. Absolutely. Um, so I'm, I'm glad you felt welcome in it. You got a lot of sacred sons to meet. We have brothers <laughs> wanting to come from LA just to hang out with you. I'll bring it. <laughs> <laughs> um, and, you know, we're leading towards uh, remembrance. You're here in San Diego leading a humanity workshop. Yes. Um, I guess, you know, for people who may just be tuning in, mm. who is Chrissy Fire Maine in this iteration mm. of your life? Well, I think the first thing is uh, I'm a woman on the edge. It's, you know, I am very much riding the cusp of creativity in my life at this point, you know, yeah. moving away from my home country and wanting to serve more um, and to better and better abilities of mine and, yeah, growing mana, evolving mana. I, I feel like I'm a woman who is, yeah, very much um, creating in the moment, like listening deeply to spirit and what is required, what's being asked of me, what's needed uh, yeah. for humanity. But I am deeply in love with people. Like human beings rock my world. Like really human beings bring me to tears just being human beings. Like yeah. just feeling the depth of the, the human heart and how much love one human heart has. It floors me, Adam. Like yeah. it, it just absolutely floors me how much love one human being has inside of them and how, how much reach that love has and how much good that love can do. Just one being like that, that will forever fascinate and drive me. Yeah. Um, and and yeah. so, yeah, that's, I'm just deeply in love with humanity. And so I just want to help humanity, you know, come out of this little sticky patch that we're going through. Yeah. <laughs> so a little think, sticky patch. I know, it's a little one. You call it chaos where I come from. <laughs> bringing a little humanity to the chaos. Yeah. We have this in common, honestly. Mm. I, I see the goodness in people. I mm. see the best in people upon meeting. Yeah. It's just, I'm tuned in this way. Yes. Um, I felt like this since I was a child. Where does it come from in you? Where does your deep passion and motivation for service come from? Mother medicine. Mama, like mm. that, that feeling of, I think I said to you, you know, I, I wanted to be a mother, you know, when I was a, probably a little one, but at 10, 11, 12, I was just like so fixated on looking after the children in my neighborhood um, and babysitting everybody's babies and families, you know, and so comfortable and um, just, just such deep care for each child. And I think that when I look at a human being the way you do and see the best in them, it comes from a, such a knowing uh, and like a, a mother's love for a child. Mm. It's just inherent. There's, there's no mind involved. There's no thinking. It's just an inherent knowing of their beauty, their goodness and their power. And so I don't know. I think it comes from a, a like a mama energy. Yeah. You know? Yeah, mm. a mama energy. Yeah. I'm over here. We're doing the, the return of the father. You know, there's a lot of father energy, as yes. I am a father, and that's fathering sacred sons in a way. Yes. So I really feel that. And you have a mentor known as Mama, Mama Ruth. Yes. Um, and she seems to be a, a big influence, just as I've spoken to you. So that's also mama energy. Yes. How do you go from neighborhood nanny, babysitter, caring <laughs> about the kids... <laughs> to like this path of spiritual work, to having this mentorship, to, to being a part of ceremonies and to bringing healing to humanity? Well, I think, you know, ar around that age, 10, 11, 12, it developed then into a, a deep passion for holding the hearts of, of girls in the, in the playground at the school that I went to. Do you know, I, that same care for, for children just translated to the care for, for any heart. And I found myself wanting very much to sit with 
the girl that was crying or the yeah. girl that was upset, you know, like I would find myself there and what well, I just wanted to listen. Like I wanted, I was, you know, so passionate about empathy even back then, but I, I didn't know that. I just was the one that wanted to sit and, and listen yeah, and not advise, listen. And, and, and just hear, you know, uh, what is in that heart? Why, you know, why is they're upset? And, and that developed. And then, you know, when I was sort of 17, 18 and we were hitting the pubs, you know, in Sydney at that age and the yeah. bars, I would always be with the winos in, and the homeless people in the corner, you yeah. know, and my, it was a running joke. Like, where's Chris? Where's Chris? Oh, you know, she'll, she's just <laughs> check, check outside on the street with the winos. And I was just, again, just wanting to hold hearts yeah um and you know f from my vision you know that's you know in this little mess that we're in that i uh, named so lovingly um i, I think it's a, a heart issue you know i think that our main issues as a, as a collective are heart issues where we're carrying a lot of pain yeah uh, as a collective and so you know and i know how swiftly that pain can dissolve i see it you know in my work I, i've got hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of cases and experiences of watching people dissolve decades of trauma yeah. it's very swiftly um but it, it, it's in that space of actually being deeply felt and listened to um and so, you know, I have said this to you before, you know, my mission is just to help as much as I can one heart at a time, yeah. you know, like one heart at a time because the power of one heart coming back into itself, really, like it's, its natural ability to connect and share and love outside of itself. That's what our heart does naturally. Yeah. And we only close that down because of hurt. And so when that hurt dissolves and we, we can reach out, like one heart, you know, can yeah. make so much change on this planet. And so I'm busy, you know, healing the hearts because I don't know who the major activators are, do you know, and, and, you know, I'm just, doing my best to keep cleaning hearts because there's activators amongst us that have right. huge roles here. Um, and, you know, it doesn't take all of us to change. Like, no, we'd be here forever. It's not that. It's just a small few of us yes. that are the, the natural uh, future leaders, you know, and when that good leadership is cleaned up and comes into power, then the rest of humanity will follow that uh, it's a you know we have a lack of good leadership we know and a lot of hurt on the planet and so yeah. you know the 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 future leaders could well be you know drunkards in pubs right now as well do you know like it's really suffering from where the world is at that's where i was right do you know through my 20s i was angry you know angry mm. at the state of the world and pissed off and addicted to all sorts of things because i was i loved the world so much i loved people and so i was angry Let's no. let's talk about this empathy because mm. I ha I have that too. When you were saying talking to the homeless, mm. when I used to skateboard with my friends as a teenager, going to downtown Dayton skateboarding courthouse square. Shout out to Dayton, <laughs> you know. Like I I had the same thing sitting outside of the library talking to the homeless people, and I was like curious about their story. Yeah, like how did you like? I see the humanity in them, and it seems like so many people don't. Mm. Right, that's right. And if you can't see it in everyone that we encounter, mm. it's almost like, are you really seeing it in anyone or even in ourselves? Um, and I'm, I'm no saint or anything like that, but in high school, it would make me sick to my stomach if I saw somebody sitting by themselves. Yes. Like there's something that I have in me too. I'm, I'm a cancer, so I've naturally mm. got that, that yeah. compassion and empathy too. But like, why are we not training that? If anything, like our education could be around these emotions of compassion, yes. empathy, understanding. Yes. Yet we're training our children in these very straight lines, putting people in boxes. Yes. Like I feel like we're, we're after the, some of the wrong things. A hundred percent. And not just training in, in our inherent abilities to have compassion, empathy, um, care, na just natural care for others, but it's a, a good education around what is blocking those things. So yeah. you spoke of judgment. Judgment is one of the 10 keys that we look at very deeply on a metaphysical level in the humanity workshop. And, you know, Suki and I actually walked around Balboa Park yesterday and we were talking about this where 
You know, we've been so conditioned. Uh, I mean, our minds just judge naturally. They just, they just throw out judgments, even unconsciously. They're just throwing them out. And when we see homeless people, do you know, we often will just throw out a judgment before we, our hearts even come online. The judgment's gone out. Yeah. And Suki and I were exploring this yesterday where, you know, the judgments, you know, there's layers of judgments that block us from feeling others. It's not just the overt judgments. Oh, that person's poor. That person doesn't have a home. That person's down and out. Dangerous. Dangerous. These things. But underneath that, there's even another sort of more, more dangerous and, and subtle judgment that isn't going just out to homeless, could be going out to bankers, going out to punks, going out to whoever. Yes. That is, I don't connect. We won't connect. I I can't connect with that human being. Right. Right. There's this there's this thing that that separates us all, and it's rubbish. Do you know we can so swiftly connect heart to heart with so many human beings, and it's usually our judgment only yeah. that is in the way, and yeah. that, and that pushes that. You know, judgment is a powerful, energetic. It pushes. It so pushes how do it we out. how do we meet that judgment in mm-hmm. Sacred Sons? We often talk about um, what is blocking the flow of love, mm. like what is preventing you from actually seeing someone or mm. seeing this brother or, or like having compassion for them mm. and naming it. Yes, as as a as an exercise to to acknowledge the judgments, but also to allow them to kind of fall off. 